have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. I've mostly fixed the sunshine on my face problem, but yes. uh, we'll see. We'll see how the sun moves today. Keep an eye. Keep an eye on it. Yes. Uh, in the news, uh, a federal judge in Texas has ruled that anyone with any kind of religious excuse can discriminate against LGBTQ people, including in the private sector. They just won't stop. Uh, but we have more LGBTQ wins in last week's elections, including now a majority, a majority of the Salt Lake City Council and two conservative Republicans on Staten Island in New York. The U.S. naval ship Harvey Milk was christened in San Diego and we have pictures. And really the worst news of the week, 2021 is now the deadliest year ever on record for trans and non-binary people. And then this story from Norfolk, Virginia, where uh, lesbian moms came to the aid of their daughter and were gunned down uh, by her boyfriend. Uh, a male student it was elected homecoming queen in a town in Missouri, and he has quite a message for the haters. Uh, trouble for the artists who drew the Superman kiss, the gay, bisexual Superman. And repression in China sh uh, continues, and the LGBTQ group there has shut down. Mysteriously. That Bulgarian presidential candidate was arrested for assault on a lesbian leader and, and on the LGBT community center itself with ten of his thugs. And as we head back to the theater, Andy will review Trevor, the musical, Off-Broadway. And we'll tell you about the new documentary, Mayor Pete, premiering this week on Amazon. So, in Texas, the infamous federal judge, Reed O'Connor, who was appointed by George W. Bush and beloved uh, by Trump, he ruled that uh, private, for-profit businesses do not have to abide by laws banning discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity if they claim it would ca clash with their religious beliefs or deeply held beliefs. <laughs> the ruling also permits religious groups and nonprofits to discriminate, allowing them not to hire LGBTQ people and to fire them if they're discovered. The case was brought on behalf of a management company owned by a Christian anti-gay activist, Stephen Hotze. Uh, so, wow, this is where they're going with this. And they want to they want to overcome the Bostock decision of the Supreme Court that says you can't discriminate in employment. Well, this is the same judge who has uh, issued a number of rulings like this over recent years that has nationalized uh, his anti uh, LGBT opinions. Correct. Yes. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, He's a dis I mean, where does this end? I mean, what, what if a person has an honest belief that women are inferior, black people are inferior? It's my honest belief. Uh, can I discriminate? He would say there's a difference. Uh, and that's what right wingers say, that uh, being LGBTQ is not the same as race or uh, gender. That's their line. Uh, the uh, mystifying thing to me is, He's a district court judge. He's the lowest level of federal judge. He's easily overrulable by uh, courts of appeals. Uh, but here we have the Supreme Court at the top that even though they're the ones who decided the Bostock decision are definitely in place to uphold things like this. Well, uh, Lambda, who was, you know, was fighting this, thinks that even the Fifth Circuit will reverse him, at least then they said, at least in part, <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> great. Thanks. That's a big help. Yeah. The um, U.S. Department of Labor uh, proposed rescinding a Trump era rule that expanded a religious exemption from anti-discrimination laws for federal contractors uh, put out in, in the last days of, of that regime. 
It exempted employers who hold themselves out to the public as carrying out a religious purpose. Uh, in the past, it only applied to a narrowly defined set of religious groups. So the Biden Department of Labor is trying to fix this. Uh, this is the ongoing back and forth about our rights and whether we are, uh, you know, whether non-discrimination laws that are passed uh, can stand up against the supposed constitutional protection of religious liberty. Uh, right. It's a battle that has been going on for several years and is only building and is going to continue to build and, and keep going to the Supreme Court until we get some, well, I wanted to say some kind of definitive ruling, but there's, there's no end to this. Uh, well, we keep doing it. Well, Gus Buttigieg has been liberated from the hospital, uh, the newborn son of Secretary of uh, uh, Transportation, Pete Buttigieg and Chastin Buttigieg, is home from the hospital, had a respiratory infection, not COVID. His sister had it as well, but she was out earlier. So there he is. I think that's him in his Halloween costume. Uh, but Pete is under a lot of attack, has been for uh, taking leave to take care of his children uh, while everyone's screaming about, you know, uh, uh, blockades at the ports and not enough truck drivers and uh, supply chain problems. But he's back on the job and, oh. and being very eloquent in his defense of the infrastructure bill and his optimism about the future. The name of that costume is Twinfrastructure, because, you know, they had twins. <laughs> well, I, and also in uh, national news, one of the more obnoxious things this week was uh, James Carville, political uh, <laughs> consultant, blaming woke culture for uh, Democrats not doing perfectly in the elections. And by the way, the Democrats did a lot better than people are giving them credit for. We have a new Democratic black mayor of Pittsburgh, first ever, a, a new black uh, female uh, mayor of Boston, first ever, and others around the country. The Democrats did not uh, we, completely. We slipped about 41 seats in Georgia. Uh, the Democrats did. I mean, come on. I mean, this is well, it's a mixture. It's a mixture. It's not all bad news. And we'll get to more of that. But Sean Patrick Maloney, I thought, had the best comment about James Carville and his uh, his crack. He says, uh, uh, yeah, well, James Carville, uh, what I remember is that my LGBT friends were being thrown out of the military when people were listening to Carville. Well, James Carville, look, I mean, he's treated like he's some kind of a political genius because he was behind the election of Bill Clinton twice as president. But both times he had the advantage of Ross Perot splitting the Republican vote. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I can't stand the guy. Uh, the update from the Victory Fund on those elections is that uh, they endorsed 131 LGBTQ candidates uh, so far, 82 of them have won. Four races are undecided. Uh, one is awaiting a runoff. Uh, and there are now over a thousand uh, LGBTQ elected officials in office in the United States. And we made a great progress in Durham County, North Carolina this week. They passed a non-discrimination ordinance protecting people from discrimination based on gender identity, sexual orientation, natural hairstyle, disability, and more. It's the sixth most populous county. More than a quarter of that state now has protections. And uh, other election good news, as we said in the headlines, in Salt Lake City, Utah, the city council, the seven member city council now has a majority people of color, and LGBTQ. Four the LGBTQs there on the top. Uh, uh, Amy Fowler is in the center on the top. And Alejandro Poi uh, on the right. Uh, Darren, uh, Darren Mayno in the center of the poll picture, the collage. And on the bottom, Chris Wharton at left. Uh, a very diverse group overall. Yes, in Salt Lake City, which is not usually given credit for such diversity, but it, it is, is very It diverse. is a city far to the left of New York City. I know it's in, an, in the Utah island, but Salt Lake City has had much more progressive uh, politicians than New York has. 
Well, speaking of New York, in fact, uh, Staten Island, which is a part of New York City, but is <laughs> certainly to the right of most of the city, even in a city which is less liberal than people like to think it is, uh, Staten Island elected two uh, out gay candidates. This guy, Ron Castorina, who is now a judge, and a is it an 11 year relationship with a man i don't talk about my lifestyle you can be gay and conservative and you don't have to be gay the way they want you to be gay <laughs> this is what he said no gratitude to the movement that made him possible for him to come out and no solidarity with activists well and let's be clear we're in this movement for everybody's freedom and and liberty and uh you know thriving lives yes. Uh, we may not agree with uh, a lot of Republicans, but we're not out to, uh, you know, uh, get rid of them. No, but they don't respect their elders. David Carr uh, was elected to the city council, the first out gay council member from Staten Island. He says that this brings us closer to the day when identity politics no longer matters. Well, that would be nice. But in the meantime, how about addressing the ongoing discrimination and violence? that LGBTQ people face. Yeah, I mean, it sound, you know, we, uh, the whole point is when you have groups of people who are discriminated against, you need to uh, uh, bring things up to speed. You need to highlight them to uh, legitimize them. And whether that's about sexual orientation or gender or race, you cannot uh, ignore those characteristics when they are the basis of discrimination. Any more election news, Ms. Northrop? Uh, no, but we have more political news, uh, one of it, which is the great celebration that was held in San Diego this weekend yes. for the launching of the U.S. naval ship Harvey Milk. There it is. And the, yeah. I think the most exciting thing was this, the presence of the Secretary of the Navy. Yes, this is Carlos del Toro. Uh, that's him there. Um, he uh, he said the Secretary of the Navy needed to be here today, not just to amend the wrongs of the past, but to give inspiration to all our LGBT community leaders who served in the Navy. For far too long, sailors like Lieutenant Milk were forced uh, into the shadows, worse yet, forced out of our beloved Navy. Uh, now, the, uh, the former secretary was also there, Ray Mabus, who ordered the ships in the name of Milk and Sojourner Truth, Chief Justice Earl Warren, RFK, Robert Kennedy, the suffragist Lucy Stone, and John Lewis. Uh, and, you know, uh, Stuart Milk, the, Harvey's nephew, well, that, by the way, in the center there is the guy behind the campaign to do this, uh, Nicole Murray Ramirez, longtime uh, California activist, gay activist, uh, and he was celebrating there. Uh, uh, the ship was christened, you know, the breaking of the champagne bottle, by uh, a former Navy member, Navy officer, Paula Nira, who is the clinical program director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Transgender Health. Uh, so everybody was there and celebrating the fact that uh, everybody serves in the Navy. And I mentioned Stuart's, uh, Stuart Milk, uh, Harvey's nephew, who said, I don't want them to uh, rescind his dishonorable discharge. I want people to remember that people got these. Yeah, and he was uh, dishonorably discharged. Right, right. Okay, uh, all right, Salt Lake, San Diego, we are... I, I'm, I'm sorry, I just have to ask you one thing. Did you say Nicole Ramirez Murray or Murray Ramirez? It's Ramirez. Well, it is, uh, it is... Uh, Ramirez Murray. Okay. I, I just I, looked it up. Okay, thank you for the correction. Yeah, just we'll do it in real time. Well, that's right. cool. in that's Michigan, to do. in Michigan, the high court there uh, killed a campaign uh, for for the ballot measure affirming LGBTQ rights. They were going to they can't get it through the legislature, so they want to break put it on the ballot. The board of canvassers deemed thousands of petition signatures invalid, leaving them seventy six thousand short. Many were rejected because they were virtually. Uh, so now, fair and equal Michigan is focused on. Attorney General Dana Nessel's lawsuit challenging a lower court ruling that state law protecting people on the basis of sexual uh, of sex also covers sexual orientation. That judge said it covers gender identity. It doesn't cover sexual orientation. 
But the Bostock decision says that sex uh, discrimination does include sexual orientation. So that's how they'll fight that out. Uh, by the way, the canvassers came up, uh, tried to get an extension for signature gathering because of COVID and were rejected. So that's uh, one reason that came up short. Right. Meanwhile, the state has decided to offer an X gender marker on driver's licenses. So they're going ahead with some advances while they fight over a non-discrimination law. But Mississippi's Department of Public Safety, Safety rescinded its simplified gender change policy for driver's licenses. Why and would they do that? Huh? Why would they do that? So they're mean. And San Diego, going back there, has banned gender gendered pronouns in city laws and policies. Uh, and a little tidbit about our friend Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema. Uh, it turns out she takes, uh, one always wonders what her motivation is uh, for her strange politics. Well, one may be that she gets donations from the uh, anti-labor uh, uh, companies that uh, run pyramid schemes like Amway and their affiliates and the DeVos family. She's a, she is a piece of work and uh, uh, will be primaried in her next uh, outing. I believe she will. All right. All right. So to to. Uh, some oh, uh, and uh, and we would be remiss, I think, not to note the uh, the workings of the log cabin Republicans who oh. have their annual. I wasn't going to mention it. Go ahead. Well, I'll mention it just because I want to keep track of them. And so people know what they're up to as they claim that they're doing uh, LGBTQ work. They held their annual, they moved their annual dinner from Washington, D.C. to Mar-a-Lago in uh, Florida so that they could honor Melania Trump with the Spirit of Lincoln Award and Rick Grinnell and Ronna McDaniel and- uh, Is the old man there? Uh, he was he dropped in on a Rick Grinnell event in his golf clothes in the afternoon, but there's no report that he showed up at the actual dinner. It's a class act all the way. <laughs> and let me just check one thing. OK, move on. OK, well, in Dallas, the trial is underway in the 2019 murder of trans woman Shinal Lindsay uh, in Dallas. Chanel, they print, the family pronounces it Chanel. Chanel, uh, indicted uh, there on the left was Ruben Alvarado, who was 22 at the time, choked and beat her to death and dumped her in White Rock Lake. Uh, Chanel's cousin, uh, Tamaya Lindsay, was overcome with grief, hopes the trial will provide answers as to why this terrible crime was committed. In uh, Centralia, Washington, uh, uh, Ricky Atamuro, also known as True Starlet, 39 years old, Latinx trans woman, shot dead the 44th murder of a trans person in uh, 2021. She was a beloved advocate and drag performer, 39 years old, and uh, yeah, it's uh, an advocate for 20 years. Uh, a suspect has been charged, evidently her partner. This is regarded as a case of domestic violence. Uh, uh, her boyfriend, 28, shot her five times at home next to her six-year-old son. Well, a horrifying domestic incident, if you want to call it that, uh, out of Norfolk, Virginia. Um, a 19-year-old uh, man uh, shot and injured his pregnant girlfriend. And then, I, well, maybe we should run the video report so that you can see what happened. Well, days after a shooting rocked the Young Terrace neighborhood in Norfolk, we are learning more about the victims and who the community describes as heroes. It was on Wednesday night when police said a 19-year-old suspect shot at one woman on Whitaker Lane. But when others tried to help her, the Norfolk Police Chief Larry Boone tells us the gunman fired shots at those four women as well. Three of them died before medics could get there. And Angelique Arentock spoke with their loved ones earlier this afternoon who have a message for the community. 
In the calls for change are calls for justice. We want justice served for all three of the victims. Norfolk police identify Nicole Lovewine and Deitra Brown as two of the women killed in Wednesday night's mass shooting. The longtime couple was always seen together. Lovewine's sister and mother hold on to the good times they shared. I'm going to miss them days. I'm going to miss them days, but they're always going to be in my heart. Yeah. They, I have they good, together. I have good memories to look back at. They together. Lovewine had four children. According to an eyewitness account, the pair tried to help Lovewine's 19-year-old daughter after her boyfriend shot her. And, uh, you know, it cost them their lives, but I don't think they would have that any other way. Annette Stone owns 37th and Zen, a bar in Norfolk. I feel like there is a trail of broken hearts left behind because... We all love them so much. Lovewine and Brown were regulars here. Brendan Mulligan is general manager. They enjoyed the dancing. They enjoyed singing karaoke. You know, they enjoyed the shrimp night. They just enjoyed being around everybody. They were great people to be around. Two young terrorist neighbors also tried to help after what unfolded Wednesday night, but police say the suspect turned his gun on them too, injuring a 39-year-old and killing Saida Costine. She was the best mom. She was my best friend. It was always us first. Uh, she never stopped fighting. Never. No matter what she went through, she, she never gave up. Costine leaves behind six children. One of her daughters, Sierra Ellerson, tells us her mom died a hero. She was just perfect. A memorial for Lovewine Brown and Costine continues to grow on Whitaker Lane. The families tell us they're thankful to everyone who has reached out. They are still planning their funerals. In Norfolk, Angelique Arentalk, 13 News Now. Please. So if it wasn't clear from that, the, the, the perpetrator, or the alleged perpetrator, if you want to say that, Zionte Palmer, uh, um, was the boyfriend of uh, uh, this young woman, 19, they're both about 19, and it was uh, the girlfriend's mothers that came to try to save her. She was shot and injured, uh, but he shot them execution style. Yeah, he killed the mothers, the lesbian couple, and another neighbor who tried to help, and it's just a terrible, terrible story. Awful, awful. Yeah. They were beloved members of the community. Yes. And then, and then uh, we're uh, in Greenville, South Carolina, uh, Marquisha Lawrence, a black trans woman, 28 years old, killed in her residence on November the 5th. It appears she was involved in an altercation with one or more individuals, but this would be the 45th trans or non-binary violent death this year. She worked as a cook, residential aide, and dancer. Uh, her mother said that she had an infectious smile and a heart of gold, and her death makes 2021 the uh, the year with the most recorded murders of trans people so far. And these, of course, are the murders that we know about. Uh, we have two months left in the year. We have already surpassed the 2020 record total. Uh, these murders just keep climbing. Uh, she, her mother also said that uh, Marquisha said to her, uh, I've not always been the best I could be, but thank you for caring enough to still be here for me. These stories of these families that are so loving and close and the loss of these young lives uh, is just absolutely tragic and terrible for us to have to report every week. And, and they've always gone on, but we now we know about them because these people were misgendered in the in past years and now we know about them. Uh, in Corvallis, Washington, a trans woman was Oregon. Beaten, Corvallis, Oregon. Oh, sorry, Oregon. Apologize. Uh, trans woman was beaten senseless at a 7-Eleven where she worked. Uh, then contracted COVID in the hospital. Three were arrested and charged with a hate crime. Uh, uh, Charlotte, the wo woman's name was Charlotte Ozizanek, uh, recovering from multiple broken bones. Uh, the perpetrators. Uh, um, uh, were just being asked to wear a mask in the store. And then that got onto this altercation. Uh, and I wonder, you know, GLAD put out a survey this week. Uh, they do it, an annual survey of uh, people's attitudes. And they found discomfort among heterosexuals rising 
uh, with discomfort with LGBTQ people and couples and, and discussion of trans issues and all of that. Uh, we tend to think that uh, uh, things are getting better, at least in people's attitudes, especially as we see more and more images of ourselves uh, all over media or uh, people coming out in real life. But there is some uh, backlash and, and there is, uh, it takes people a while to get used to things. And so in this moment where we are celebrating uh, our visibility, uh, GLAD in its survey is finding that uh, straight people, uh, a large, uh, substantial number, are uncomfortable with this. And we see this in the elections, too. All of that that happened in Virginia was about discomfort. And it's not as if we've conquered racism and sexism either, I mean, despite well, legal advances. But there was a, a victory in, where are we? We're in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, Zach Wilmore was voted the uh, state of Missouri's first ever male homecoming queen at Rockbridge High School. He identified as he identifies as gay, and he asked his TikTok fo followers whether he should run for king or queen, and they told him queen would look prettier on the sash. The announcement of his victory has more than four million views and almost a million likes. But when one viewer criticized him for taking a little girl's dream away, Wilmore fired back on TikTok. Before I start this video, let me just put on my crown that I won fair and square because homecoming is quite literally a popularity contest. A lot of you guys' main points in the video of me winning was that I was stealing some little girl's dream, quote unquote. It was some little boy's dream too, and that little boy was me. You guys are hiding your hatred and homophobia in a thick layer of fake empathy. I'm still friends with all the candidates who I ran for homecoming royalty, which for the record, there are boys and girls both running. There could only be one winner. It could have been a straight girl. It could have been a straight guy. It happened to be me, which is fine. The problem is you guys commenting hate under my video and your inability to let things change. People were happy for me. You guys weren't because of your fixed mindset. Now that that's settled, let's move on, okay? That's why I decided to be called a queen instead of a king when they announced me for homecoming royalty. Quite honestly, it was an Instagram poll. I was like, should I be called a queen or a king? And everyone was like, queen would look so much prettier on the side. I was like, you guys are so right. So that's what I did. Why did I decide to wear a dress? I felt pretty in a dress. Gold is my color. We love it. Anyways, thank you guys for all the support under that video and the support for me in general. I really do appreciate it. And for all the haters on my page, thank you guys so much for boosting my video. Because of you guys, I have an interview with NBC. We love, love, love it. I'll see you guys on TV. Kiss, kiss. I love you guys so much. Should we have them guest host the show? Zach's adorable. Uh, he can take over right now. Uh, and uh, and the school is so supportive, they're changing their dress code so that they uh, liberalize it and allow the students to wear whatever they want, uh, you know, within reason of uh, uh, what, you know, uh, nothing too uh, provocative, uh, anytime they want. So congratulations to them. Rockbridge High School, Columbia, Missouri. All right, let's go uh, to uh, Berlin. Wisconsin, uh, after allegations that Lucas, a trans student who identifies as male, was assaulted sexually multiple times in the school's restroom, 50 students walked out in protest. Now, days later, the police investigators said there's no evidence of an assault against Lucas that took place, but... Well, the, uh, the police are saying no evidence of an attack, but Lucas is saying, look, they told me to pull down my pants, they've been harassing me with... Uh, you know, homophobic language, they've been cornering me. So did they physically attack me? No, but did they uh, attack me emotionally, mentally, uh, humiliate me, tell me to pull down my pants? The school supported him and reported this to the police and the police are the ones who are saying, well, you know, they didn't beat him up, so uh, uh, whatever. But the students are saying, look, there's a whole history of homophobia in the school. Uh, and they walked out in support of Lucas. Well, the whole government of Tennessee is torturing a poor trans boy, Luke Esquivel, 14 years old at Farragut High School in Knoxville. He is barred now by law uh, from playing on the boys' golf team. There he is with his mom, Shelly. He's filed a lawsuit with the ACLU to overturn that law. He's got the support of Shelly, his mom. Tennessee also bans gender-affirming care for transgender youth. 
ridiculous. Uh, trust me, he could play golf without any problem to, uh, to his fellow students. Uh, all right. In, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> and just to prove that you can get in trouble for being transphobic, uh, uh, Ingo Rademacher, longtime actor, uh, been on General Hospital since 1996, has been fired because he called uh, Health and Human Services Secretary Rachel Levine a dude. Actually, what he did was uh, retweet someone else calling uh, well, Rachel Levine a dude. But his fellow cast member said, thank God he's gone. He's terrible. Well, he, 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 said, he apologized for the dude remark, but he stands by his criticism the, of the hypocrisy of the left-wing media, but added, I don't think it's okay to call a transgender an empowered woman, because where does that leave women? <laughs> you know, you quit while you're ahead. You were apologizing and then you backtrack. Um, well, this is why his fellow cast members are not shy about speaking up at their he delight that he's gone. He says his transgender co-star, Cassandra James, is gorgeous, and that proves that he's not transphobic. And he lets his son wear a dress. <laughs> Uh, and congratulations to General Hospital for having a, a trans actor on the show and for getting rid of Ingo. Now, we told you about the bisexual Superman kiss, right? The new yes. Superman. Uh, the police were dispatched to the homes of the illustrators because outraged fans are targeting them with threats at home and at the studio. As they said, uh, it's a cartoon, folks. <laughs> Perhaps you should calm down. A uh, terrible story out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Mark Glaze, a gay man, 51 years old, you see him there at the podium, was a fundamental leader in the gun control movement. He got involved early on. He worked for the major gun control organizations. But he was someone who had been plagued with addictions and depression uh, and he was just arrested uh, for a drunk driving accident in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And while in prison, he took his own life. He committed suicide. Very, very sad, highly regarded within the movements and uh, very sad. He'd worked for HRC too. He was a gay activist, a gun control advocate, uh, a major figure and a big loss. In Orlando, there was vandalism at the temporary Pulse Memorial, where I've been, where people just put things up on a fence. Someone in a wheelchair rolled up and torched part of it. Police are asking, for, this happened October 12th, but the police are releasing the video because they're asking for the public's help in identifying the perpetrator. And with all these stories of violence this week and, uh, and death and, and terrible stories, I have to say that the thing that uh, also affected me enormously uh, was something that happened 50 years ago that is now a movie running on Showtime, and that is Attica, uh, about the prison uh, revolution and uprising 50 years ago at the Attica prison in upstate New York. Uh, I remember it vividly because I'm old enough to remember it. And uh, it was, it ended up being a police massacre at the direction of Governor Nelson Rockefeller of the inmates, the unarmed inmates who uh, took over the prison because they were treated so horribly there and wanted to negotiate better conditions. And so they held some of the guards uh, hostage and uh, and eventually the state just couldn't tolerate it anymore and sent in the police to massacre, massacre the inmates. And it is just heartbreaking would be such an understatement. But I, I strongly urge you, please watch the movie Attica on Showtime uh, if you can. It's uh, Stanley, a Stanley Nelson film, terrific uh, documentary maker. Uh, and and really uh, and new footage that we haven't seen in 50 years and a, a tremendously important uh, document. Uh, please watch it. And please stop what they're doing in Kansas. The Goddard School District ordered 29 books removed from school libraries pending review, including Alison Bechtel's 
Fun Home, This Book is Gay by James Dawson, Gender Queer by Maya Kobabi, uh, The Handmaid's Tale, uh, uh, stuff by August Wilson, stuff by Mark, Mark you know, all these, all these authors, Tony Morrison. It's just, uh, it's getting out of hand. Well, the, uh, it turns out that what happens is that a parent complains and the school just automatically yanks the books and says, okay, we'll study these. We don't know what these books say, really, uh, but uh, we're just taking them temporarily while we study them. We're not going to trust the librarians, the professionals we hired us to, to stock the no. show. No, some some parent complains and that trumps right. everything. And mm -hmm. and a good note to end this section: uh, two conservative female rabbis married in Massachusetts. They appear to be the first conservative rabbis uh, to marry as a same-sex couple. Congratulations to them. All right, international news uh, in China: the Ministry of, of Civic Affairs uh, uh, they've 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 dealt with. 3,330 illegal social organizations and 200 illegal websites, obviously including the China LGBT group. Uh, they are called LGBT Rights Advocacy China, which has been working for years to change laws and policies and bring legal actions. No explanation. They've shut, they've shut themselves down. They, uh, they can't take it anymore, the growing repression. They've challenged the government uh, with their queer advocacy online campaign. They have brought lawsuits about employment they, and custody rights and conversion therapy and textbooks, uh, and now they're gone. All right, in Bulgaria, we told you that the LGBT center there was invaded by a presidential, right-wing presidential candidate and 10 thugs. Uh, we have a picture of the activist who was hit, uh, Gloriva Filipova, um, by, she was hit by this ultra-right guy, Boyan Rasate, um, who's running for president. So he has been, that's him, he has been arrested. And the, the country, seem, it's not a liberal country, but they've ra rallied around this, the government, they're, they're charging him. Uh, the ambassadors from the United Kingdom, the United States and France visited the trashed center and the attack, the attack was condemned across the political spectrum. Uh, we've told you that uh, Chris Cooper was not uh, crazy about the new movie, The Eternals, but loved it for its uh, gay content. Uh, the opposite reaction from Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Kuwait, which have banned the movie because of the gay kiss in it. Disney, to its credit, refused to cut the gay kiss. That's that's a step forward. These movie companies used to bow down to these countries and cut the uh, gay content, but Disney is saying no, they're leaving it in, and therefore the movie is banned in those countries. Well, being a murderous homophobic regime is no barrier to owning a soccer team in England. Uh, Saudi Arabia has taken over Newcastle United, and Amnesty International protested the sale, and they said you couldn't do this in Saudi Arabia. In Ireland, a married lesbian who was suffering from excruciating pain from what turned out to be uh, ovarian cysts uh, and had had two surgeries but was still suffering, uh, was refused by a male gynecologist a hysterectomy. Uh, why did he refuse her the hysterectomy? Because she might change her sexual orientation down the line, and and she might end up with a man who wanted children. Hey, man, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty one. All right, in Canada, they have their first out lesbian government minister, Pascal Saint 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 Ange at the center there with uh, uh, Trudeau. Uh, her per portfolio is sport and economic development for the regions of. Quebec, uh, they've got two, I believe, just two gay male ministers as well. Well, that's three in the cabinet, which is uh, two more than we've got. Uh, and, and we're just happy to have one. Also in Canada, <laughs> you want progress? Watch Family Feud. Uh, they have indigenous two-spirit families. They have gay families. They have dr people in drag. Family feud in Canada is uh, the place for progress. All right. In Liverpool, they are on the verge of approving the first statue of an 
out LGBTQ figure. This is the mock-up of it. Brian Epstein, who was the first manager of the Beatles. It was championed by the Brian Epstein Legacy Project. It shows him striding from his family store to the noisy cramped cellar that was the cavern in 1961, where the Beatles were performing. His death, and he took his own life in, uh, in 67, was seen as the beginning of the end of the group. He was only 32 years old. Well, his life was seen as the beginning of the group because he's the one who uh, recognized their potential and uh, took them out of that little uh, basement club and promoted them and managed them. Uh, he was known as the fifth Beatle and was a very important figure and was only 32 when he died. Uh, in Spain, the government is now going to offer free fertility treatment for lesbians, bisexual women, uh, trans women uh, or trans men who become pregnant and single women. Uh, this is all under the government health program, which uh, offers free fertility treatment, which has been limited to married uh, straight women before this. Let's take you to the top of Mont Blanc, uh, the highest peak in the Alps and Western Europe. The Pink Summits Group raised the rainbow flags there back on September 21st. It's part of a visibility campaign uh, uh, to you know, bring these things to the highest peaks in every continent, including they're gonna do Mount Everest in a couple of years. They document their experiences, fundraise for local LGBT organizations and survivors of anti-LGBTQ violence and offer youth mentorships around the globe. The founder, a guy named uh, Dastan uh, Kazamintov, is from very conservative Kyr Kyrgyzstan and broke free from a family that tried to change him. Looks nice up there at 15,000 feet. Uh, in AIDS news, are we ready to move on? Uh, well, uh, you, I would, okay, you want to do South Korea in, in entertainment news. AIDS yep. news, uh, don't forget our guest next week is Jim Hubbard uh, from the, uh, the, the, the formal name of it is the... Well, well he's, uh, he's one of the creators with Sarah Schulman of the ACT UP Oral History Project. Uh, but he's going to, uh, why have I lost my notes on that? But Jim Hubbard, who, and who made the mo movie United in Anger, uh, he's going to come be our guest next week. Tune in for that. Uh, more details in our show yeah. note previewing that. COVID deaths in the United States have now surpassed the total number of Americans who died from HIV AIDS, which, which is estimated to be about 700,000. Now we've got 760,000 dead. But I'm very excited about this new treatment pill that is coming down the road very fast. Uh, first from Pfizer, that they seem to have the best uh, version, a COVID treatment pill, which is a combination of da -da 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 -da, a protease inhibitor. You've heard those words before. Uh, invented in 1996 for HIV, combined with ritonavir, which is an anti-HIV drug. Uh, ritonavir serving as a booster for the anti-COVID uh, protease inhibitor. Low-dose ritonavir because it has side effects, uh, uh, but very exciting. Merck also has an anti-COVID pill, a treatment pill, not quite as good results yet, but working on that. If we have a pill that is going to treat COVID, that is amazing news. And also, a study pro has proved that the HPV vaccine, uh, the human papillomavirus vaccine, is 87% effective in preventing cancers, including anal cancers, particularly for gay men. Okay. And yet, right-wing radio host Dennis Prager said during an interview during the aids crisis can you imagine if gay men and ivy drug users had been treated as pariahs the way we're treating the non-vaccinated now <laughs> imagine it's, can you imagine it's, can you imagine? Said it's inconceivable inconceivable only to someone as ignorant and bigoted as you mr prager well he was he was schooled very quickly online yeah and did he yeah. repent i haven't heard any response from him okay all right, entertainment news. Well, I saw Trevor the Musical, uh, based on the 1994 Oscar-winning short film. It really was a short film, it was like 16 minutes. It's about a gay Diana Ross-loving kid in junior high school uh, that led to the founding of the Trevor Project, which is a national hotline for LGBTQ teens contemplating self-harm. 
Um, the musical, that's a genuine 13 year old there on the left, uh, played by, that's Trevor Holden William ha Hagelberger. It, it's really a breakout role. It's both sweet and it's true to the pain of being bullied for being different. Very energetic ensemble directed by Mark Bruni, choreography by Josh Prince, book and lyrics by Dan uh, Collins, music by Julianne uh, Wick Davis. It, it touches the funny bone and the heart and it's the gayest show in town. Here is a sample. Every day is just a day that's been ticking away. Leading up to the day of my destiny. Now it's all taking shape. Soon I'll finally escape. Every day of this middle school I'm sorry, go ahead. Just to see junior high school students not being played by 30-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. But if you're not in New York to see Trevor the Musical and you want to see some LGBTQ music, we have three offerings for you this week. One is uh, the Brothers Osborne. You may remember T.J. Osborne, country singer, came out earlier this year. Well, he has a new album with a song called Younger Self, which he and his brother and his band are performing tonight, Wednesday night on the Country Music Association Awards. And it is fantastic. Uh, we're gonna put the, a link to the video in our weekly show note, go to gayusatv.org to get on our mailing list. You do not wanna miss this or just go to YouTube and look up uh, uh, TJ Osborne, Younger Self. Also this week, uh, there's a new gay K-pop boy band from Korea called Lionesses, and they have a great new song called Show Me Your Pride, which is also fantastic. We will also link to that in our show note. And just to round out the, uh, the playlist, we're going to put a, a link to Brandi Carlisle's performance at the Grammys two years ago of the Joke, which is one of the all-time great anti-bullying songs and brought the crowd to its feet there. And, and I'm going to link to the original 16-minute Oscar-winning Trevor film so that you can see what all this is based on. Now, did you see Spencer? I see you... Uh... I did not see it. We have a review from uh, Chris Cooper. It stars out uh, Kristen Stewart as Diana. Chris says she does a good job perhaps even Oscar worthy, but the movie itself is stultifying. He says there's a lesbian uh, a bit in it, but he won't reveal it. So you'll have to see the film. He's well, also, they're also, writing about it a lot. He's also complaining that most of the drama is kept off screen. Also, the lesbian moment seems to be a fantasy of the director rather than- uh, well, The whole thing is a fab it's called a fable. It's not based on reality. Yeah. Uh, well, he interviewed a lot of people, and it's about a, a Christmas weekend at the country house with the royal oh, family. Yeah. Uh, Harry Styles and Billy Porter are back in the news. Uh, first of all, Billy Porter is apologizing to Harry Styles for his comment, of, his snarky comment about Harry Styles in a dress oh. on the cover of Vogue, um, uh, and said and. Billy Porter says, well, it wasn't about you. It's about the erasure of people of color who contribute to the culture. Uh, and Harry Styles in concert this week, uh, he saw a fan at the front, a, a young woman holding up a uh, sign saying, tell my mother uh, I'm gay. Uh, and her mother was in the, the back of the auditorium. So Harry Styles says, okay. And he turns to the back of the auditorium and says, Mom, she's gay. 
<laughs> Cheers from the crowd. So. All right. And tell us about young Plato. Well, young Plato, uh, uh, we're in the midst of the, or about to be in the midst of the Doc NYC annual film festival. Hundreds, literally, of documentary films. And I saw one that I thought was just fabulous that is playing this Sunday and Monday at the Chelsea Sinopolis Theater, Young Plato. It's well, it's, it's docnyc.net for the whole schedule. And the, the festival is from November 10th through the 18th. And this is about a uh, school, a different approach to schooling young elementary school boys in Belfast, Northern Ireland, uh, away from violence, uh, and with a teacher who teaches philosophy, Socrates and Aristotle, and and has the most gentle approach to uh, addressing conflict between these boys. Uh, and and he's a big Elvis fan, so you hear a lot of Elvis in this. And COVID comes into it, and uh, it, the violence is uh, heartbreaking in Northern Ireland, and and their difficulties in arise in rising from that. Very very affecting film. Uh, also, there's an LGBT uh, film, Colors of Toby, uh, from Hungary Hungary about a young trans teen. Uh, also playing at Sinopolis on uh, Mon on Sunday, but you can see that one online too, Colors of Toby, T-O-B-I. And speaking of Belfast, of course, that's one of the top uh, uh, tipped films for Oscar, the Kenneth Branagh film about his growing up in Belfast and his family leaving. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. Well, I, at the New York Film Festival, they showed Mayor Pete, the documentary, and now it's going to be on Amazon Prime as of 11 12 uh, by Jess Moss, who spent 11 months with his subject during his campaign. And Buttigieg, you know, only came out publicly at the age of 33 in 2015 while he was mayor of South Bend, Indiana. The film deals with him struggling with uh, how to integrate that into his public life with Chastin by his side. Trailer, please. Anything you want to make sure that I ask him? You spent so much of your life hiding that you truly were. Did you feel like you were able to be your true self for the campaign trail? A hometown boy who went to Harvard and became a Rhodes Scholar only to return to the city where he grew up. He's also a newlywed. I made Pete promise that we would have fun. This is the only chance you'll ever get to vote for a Maltese American left-handed Episcopalian gay war veteran mayor millennial. <laughs> It's a leap going from being a mayor to being a presidential candidate. But I realized I had something to offer that was just different. When I talked about coming out, that was for everybody who's tried to figure out how to be who they are. The challenge, of course, is how do you master the game without it changing you? A developing story. One candidate is dealing with a crisis back home. There had been an officer involved shooting. Get them off the streets! You looked a little too green, like you weren't ready. Are you saying things that project the right kind of warmth? Are you connecting with people? My way of coming at the world, the stronger an emotion is, the more private it is. I've never met someone who thinks so deeply about what he can do for other people. You're gonna tell every single gay kid in this country that it gets better. You're looking at someone who, as a young man, wondered if something deep inside of him meant that he would forever be an outsider. And now you were looking at that same young man, happily married, asking for your vote for President of the United States. Just to let you know, there is a cow in the audience. We know whose side the cow is on. There's a lot at stake. Looking forward to that on Amazon Prime. Um, lest we forget, he won the Iowa primary, didn't he? Uh, if you say so. Okay. Uh, update, weekly update. Dancing with the Stars. We were worried about JoJo Siwa last week. She was in the bottom two and got saved only by the judges. Would this be the week that she couldn't stick around? Well, she got uh, almost the highest points again 
Uh, it was Janet Jackson week. She and her partner, Jenna, did a, a very sexy salsa dance, showing a lot of cleavage, JoJo, for the first time. The judge, Bruno, said that you were drop dead sexy. You push it to the limit. You have the courage to go there. And they made it to the semifinals. Now, I, I there, think that people were listening to Ann Northrup on Gay USA and voted for who it. Who said, go vote for JoJo if you care about this. Uh, unfortunately, there's also news that she split with her girlfriend, uh, oh, no. Kylie. Uh, but they're, they remain best friends, and uh, JoJo is living her best life right now. I'm friends with all my ex-husbands. Me all too. Right. Okay, uh, and uh, we want to talk about our good friend and associate producer, Bill Ballman. He is, there he is on the left there. He is going to be DJing for the first time since lockdown on Saturday, November 13th at Le Poisson Rouge uh, in support of the New York City band The Bush Tetras at the site of the Old Village Gate. Go to LPR.com for more information. Bill has a long and storied history as a DJ. We wonder sometimes why he's hanging out with us when he, he was such he a star. Uh, he, he, uh, Le Poisson Rouge is on Bleecker Street, 158 Bleecker. Uh, this performance by the Bush Tetras, who are a band of three women, uh, is, who his brother used to produce, record, and manage is in honor of a retrospective box set that they're uh, releasing. But that's uh, Saturday night at 7, a nice early time for the oldsters at uh, Le Poisson Rouge. Bill's activism goes back to the early days of the Gay Activist Alliance. And then, of course, he was very involved in uh, uh, AIDS activism before ACT UP with the uh, Lavender Hill Mob. Correct. Now, I'm also uh, excited about a couple of other old timers showing up. Uh, Kiki and Herb are back. <laughs> Your favorite. Justin, Vivian Bond and Kenny Millman. Oh, they are fantastic. And they said they were retiring this act uh, years ago. They did a farewell appearance at Carnegie Hall, which I saw. But now they're going to be back at BAM, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, on from November 30th to December 4th with a holiday show called Kiki and Herb slay s-l-e-i-g-h at bam i've already got my tickets uh, i'm sure there aren't a lot left but uh, go to bam everybody's welcome ladies and gentlemen as they say and uh, uh the film forum here in new york uh legendary uh, small movie theater is doing a they do periodic series they're doing one called road movies uh november 12th through december 2nd which includes some uh, old LGBT themed movies like uh, My Own Private Idaho, uh, Priscilla Queen of the Desert, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Happy Together, the great Chinese film. Uh, that's the film forum road movies if you want to check that out. Oh my God, so much. We're everywhere all the time. We are. <laughs> and we're, oh, I have us down to our last 30 seconds. That's true. Um, uh, so sign up for our email list. That's how you're going to get all the links to all these things, including Bill Ballman's uh, gig uh, and all those music the things that answer. Those music videos, you'll love them. You go to gayusatv.org. You sign up. GoDaddy sends you an email, says you really want to do this, and you say yes, and you're on the list. One email a week, and then us next week with Jim Hubbard. Thanks for coming.